Hi, I'm Adam with HKN. Remember that problem we were doing, the Ubermesh? Well, yeah, we never really solved it. But guess what? We're back to solve it with matrices. So this is what we had last time. We had all these equations, all these variables, and no solutions. We wanted to solve for the currents. We wanted to, but we didn't want to do a lot of work for it. So what we're going to do is figure out a way to do it with matrices on your calculator. So you don't have to substitute, eliminate, or do any cr other crazy stuff that you might have to do without a calculator. And hopefully they allow calculators on your exam. I know in 2001, in this school, they do. Yeah, you can. So the first one we have is just an example. This is an easy example so we can figure out how to do it with matrices. So we have this equation, 5x plus 3y equals 1, and then 4x plus 2y equals 1. So we want to solve for x and y. In a normal system of equations, what we would do is eliminate either x or y, and then solve for x or y, and then substitute or any of those other things. But in this situation, all we have to do is make a coefficient matrix, which we'll call A, a variable matrix, which we'll call X, and a solution matrix, which is all the constants on the right hand of the uh, equal sign. And we're going to call that one B. Don't you love that squeak? So what do we have here first? We have the coefficient matrix. Now let's put all the coefficients in A. So what do we have here? We have 5. I want to get the orange marker, though. So we got 5, 3, 4, and 2. What do we have in the x? We have this x right here and this y. Now. Right over here, we have the x and the y. So if we had x, y, and z, they would just continue going down. We want to make sure they're in order from left to right, going down in this equation, uh, how many ever equations you have. I'll show you in this example, because there's more than two variables that we have to worry about. But let's move on to the solution matrix, which is going to have 1 and 1 in it. So might be looking at this being like, OK, now what do I do? I don't even know how to put this on my calculator. Well, we're going to show you how to do that. But first, we have to figure out, OK, just algebraically, how would you solve this normally? You know. So what would we have? We would have, let's see, ax equals b, right? Because we want to solve for x. And we have this a, and we have this b. So in matrices, you have to know something. You can't divide by matrices. You can only multiply by inverses. So that's like saying, instead of saying 2 divided by 2, we have to do 2 times 2 to the negative 1. Because there's no dividing in matrices. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do with this to make sure that we only have x on this left side? Well, we're going to multiply by the inverse of a. Another cool thing, a rule that is, about matrices, is that you can only multiply on the same side on both sides. Let me re rephrase that. Basically, order matters in matrices. So if we were to say, instead of this, which is what we're going to try to do, instead of this, if we were to do, OK, a to negative 1 a x equals b a the negative 1 a. That doesn't, that doesn't happen. No, no, absolutely not. Mm -mm, mm -mm. We can only do this, because order matters. Because we multiplied a inverse on the left side out over here, we have to multiply on the left side over here. So let's continue here. What are we going to get when we multiply a by a inverse? Well, we're just going to get 1, right? Because remember, 2 times neg 2 to the negative 1, or 2 inverse, is just 1. So right over here, we're just going to get x equals a to the negative 1 b. And that's going to give us our solution. But now we have to do it in matrices. So let's get our calculator up. 
We have one. Yeah. Oh, there it is. There it is. Right over here. So let's cancel out of whatever this is. So second quit or clear. Anyway. So we're going to go to second matrix. And that's going to bring up this list of matrices that we could have. Let's go to edit. And then enter. Now we want this to be a two by two matrix. Why? Well, matrices are row by column. That's how you define them. So if you had a box that was too high by too wide, you would say it's a two by two box. Well, this is a two by two matrix. Well, in this one, in matrices, they all go row by column. There's two rows here, one, two, and columns, one, two. So it's a two by two matrix. So this one's going to be two by two. We're going to put in all those constants that we have. We have five right over there. We have four. Enter. Three, yeah, three, sorry. And then there's four, and then it's two. So now we have that done. We're going to exit out of that, second quit. Then we're going to go back into matrix, second matrix. And we're going to make our B matrix right over here. This guy, we have to put one by one. Now what, is the, what are the dimensions of this matrix? It's a two by one, because there's two rows and one column. So the constants that are going to be in here are one and one. Pretty simple. So once we have that done, we're going to move on to trying to figure out how to do this. OK, so once we quit out of here, Oh, we're already there. So we're going to do second matrix again. We're going to do enter just to get that matrix A on the board. And then we're going to go to the negative one. See, there's a negative, negative one right over here. Or you can do second, or you can do caret to the negative one. There's a bunch of different ways to do negative one. But that means inverse. So that's A to the negative one. So we have this now. If you remember, this is how we got our answer. We're already there. We've done it algebraically without the whole matrix array. So we have x equals a to the negative 1 times b. So now we just have to multiply it by b. So we're going to go to second matrix, get b out, and just multiply it. Or just enter, and that'll bring it up there. And now we have a to the negative 1 times b. So we just press enter again, and we get this matrix. So what does that mean exactly now that we have just this matrix 0.5 and negative well, let's find out. We got x equals 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5. So what that means is that 0.5 is equal to x and negative 0.5 is equal to y. Because if we remember, this x matrix, we just labeled that this. It's actually equal to this xy right over here. So now we have our solutions. We have x and y. So let's try to do it with that, mm, that problem, that Ubermesh problem that we tried to figure it out. And we've been putting off for a while now. Ah, OK, so let's see. This one's going to have three solutions. We need, we need to solve for three variables. We have three variables, i1, i2, and i3. And we have three equations. So. What do we do? The first thing I notice is that these are not all in order. So this one's i3 and that one's i1. We want to make sure that these are all in order. So let's just flip this one around. Negative i1. Then I look at, over at this equation again and I see, oh, there's no i2 in this equation. Hmm, That's going to be weird because if you remember, we need to put all the coefficients of everything right over here. So if there's no variable, then what do we do? Well, what we're going to do is we're just going to do adding a 0 times that variable. Because that means the same thing. 0 times everything is 0. And we just anything t plus 0 is whatever you added it to. So we got this 0, i2, minus i1. Nope. Plus i3. That's very blurry. Hope you can see that. Let's try that again. We're going to do plus i3. 
and that's all still equal to 1 amp. Okay, so why did we do that? Well, we're going to make a matrix. I wonder if you guys are tired of that yet. Matrix? Do I say too much? Maybe. Matrix. Matrix, matrix. Let's put these coefficients in this matrix. We have negative 1 because negative 1 times i1 is negative i1. I want to put that in as negative 1. Then what's the coefficient here? This is why we added this. It's a 0. So we're going to put 0 here. Now you can't skip the things that you put in the matrix because it just doesn't work. You won't be able to skip it. What's the coefficient of this i3? It's 1. And now we can just go down the list because this right here, this is equation 1, this is equation 2, and this is equation 3. That's how you're putting them into the matrix. I don't like this marker, so I'm going to go to this one. We've got a negative 3. Oh, much better. We've got 11. And this negative 2. If we keep on going down. Remember, we're just doing the coefficients of these variables. We've got 8, negative 5, 6. Now, what do we do in this situation for the variable matrix? Hmm, interesting. What do we do, Adam? Well, I'll tell you what we do. It's going to be the same thing we did over there. And if you remember, I kind of talked about it. But we're going to go down the list from I1, I2, and I3. And that's going to be a 3 by 1 matrix. I'll just write it right underneath so you remember that this is a 3 by 3. This is a 3 by 1. What is this equal to? Can you guess? 1 amp, 0, and negative 20 amp. So we got 1, 0, and negative 20. So do we remember what we do now? That's the thing. Oh, well, we have to go to our calculator. So let's get that calculator up. Now let's go to second matrix. If we remember, we're going to go second matrix. And this is where it comes in handy to know what the dimensions of your matrix are. Remember, it's row by column, not column by row. So this is not, this is not 1 by 3. This is a 3 row by 1 column matrix. So we got A is a 3 by 3, so we're going to do Enter, Edit, and we're going to do 3, 3, Enter by 3. Enter again, and then you'll come to the individual components of the matrix. We're going to do <clears throat> we're going to do negative one, zero, one, negative three, eleven. All the way. Over. We're just going to fill in that matrix with the same things that we have in our constant matrix right here. That's negative two, and then we have eight. We have negative five. And we have 6. So now we need our B matrix. Now, while we get that B matrix up, I'm just going to try to explain again what we're doing here. We have this labeled as, let's call this A again. We'll call this X again. We'll call this B. We want, well, we want X. We want X. But in order to get to X, we need to solve this equation. A, X equals B. So what do we do since we can't divide by matrices? Well, what we do is we multiply by inverses. So we go A to the negative 1, A, X equals A to the negative 1, B. That way, we can get rid of this A on this side and only have the X, which we're left with X equals A to the negative 1, B. So let's open that matrix. Let's go to second matrix again. Enter. Enter. Because then we want this A right there. And we're going to just do, there's, a, there's an inverse button right here. Or there's, you can do second and then negative 1. Either way works. And then you just multiply that by going back in to the matrix thing and clicking B. And that is our matrix. So if you see there, our matrix 
our solution matrix, the variable, for the variables, we got x is equal to negative 2 point, about 1.4, or 0.14, and then negative 0 0.79, and negative 1.14. So these are all the currents that we calculated from that last problem. Are they right? I think so. I think so. As long as our equations are right, then these will be right. So these are the currents that we need to solve for. They are, as we see right over here, there's a little room here. I'll move this up here. We got, can we just minimize that calculator? Remember x. This x right here, that's the same thing as this matrix right over here. So we got I1, I2, and I3. And what do we have on the other side? We have negative 2.14. Well, there you go, and that's all the currents that we were trying to solve for in the last problem, notice how they're all negative, so they're going in the opposite direction that we thought they were going. Yeah. So wherever the arrows were going, they're actually going in the opposite direction. Oh well. Well, we solved for them though, and that's good. And that means that we're almost done. We're basically done. Well, let's just check. Okay, let's double check that we did everything right. We got AX equals B. We did the inverse right over here. We found the x, which is the variable matrix right over here, what it was equal to. Uh, we got it over here, and then we made sure that i equals this, i1 equals this, i2 equals that, and i3 equals that. Now if you don't understand anything, just make sure to comment on the video. Um, ask any questions about how to do this, if, you, if we missed anything or left anything out. And if you have any questions, definitely email us. Uh, I've been Adam, and I hope you learned something. See you guys next time.